Hey everyone, welcome back to The Hidden Brick, where today we're going to build the LEGO City 4x4 response unit. Set number 60165, 347 pieces. So this is from the Coast Guard sub-theme of LEGO City that has been released on the second half of 2017. So um, I've built a majority of them, mostly the small sets. So this is what I would consider a medium-sized set. So I still have a few to buy to complete this um, sub-theme for 2017. So I will be getting them all eventually. You know, it's, it's one of those things where it just takes time. As, as most everyone knows, Lego is not a cheap hobby. So I have to uh, save money from my day job and eventually get all the sets that everyone wants to see so i know a lot of people have been waiting for the lego city stuff um, unfortunately lego city is one of the most expensive lego themes believe it or not of all the lego themes they have including all the licensed themes including star wars superheroes and any other disney type related themes believe it or not an original ip set for uh, lego city is ridiculously expensive all right, so we have numbered bags. There's bag one. We have bag three and four. And we have a medium-sized sticker sheet. Has some pretty big stickers on there. Also, we had this uh, orange raft, large raft piece. It was just loose in the box. So we'll keep that to the side. So um, interesting uh, picture on the... Uh, let's see if you notice something about this. This is instruction book number one. Um, this is for the set number 60165, which is the one we're building. But if you notice, there is a, um, there's not the orange raft shown. There's actually a olive green looking raft there. So we have the orange one. So why is there an olive green one there? Um, let's open up bag number one. And this may solve our problem right away. Ta-da, look at that. So bag one, there's our olive green raft. It's a mini raft. And then we have a small bag of parts in here. So that's pretty cool. We get two rafts. You can see how I was saying this was a large raft. And this is what I would consider the small or normal size raft. So huge difference. I mean, this is extra extra large compared to this little thing so anyway move that to the side um let's begin with some minifigures so we have um this is one of the divers or uh rescue guys that's in the wetsuit you can see the black wetsuit and there's the zipper on the back that represents the the person in it um, we're going to put a air tank over the neck bar and we have a face so we have a double printed face you can see we have the scared face and then we have just the kind of like a little smirk kind of like a little halfway smile grin they show the scared face in the instruction book so that's the one i'm going to go with i don't know what he's scared about but we're going to just gonna go with it so we have a helmet and then the little dive mask that goes on top of the helmet, just like that. He has some flippers to help guide him through the water a little bit better. And he's going to be holding a camera with a clear round tile on there to kind of represent the lens. So that's it for our first minifigure for the set. Next mini minifigure is a little bit more simple minifigure. Is blue pants, a sand blue jacket, with the orange undershirt, single printed face. You see, he has that little little smirk as well. You can see nothing on the back, and the reason there's nothing on the back of this one is you can see when you put the hat on him. If there was a face printed on there, you would see a face on the back. So it would um, be kind of weird seeing a two-faced man. 
So we'll move him to the side with our diver. The next step of the instructions actually just shows this. That's it. It doesn't show us doing anything with it. It's just a picture of this. So I will assume that that is built. Sometimes, I've seen this part come in other sets. Sometimes they put um, little pieces. You can see there's studs right here where the eyes are supposed to be. Sometimes I've seen stuff on there, but for the most part, this is more or less just a typical animal type accessory that comes in a set. You know, if you get a set that has a, say a police dog in it, you really don't build anything on the police dog. It's just an accessory. Um, it kind of makes me giggle a little bit that they show the, the picture and the instructions as if you're gonna build something on it. And then the next step, it just shows us starting this. So they're just saying, hey, you should have one of these in the bag. Verify that you do. Oh, you have that? Okay, now we're done with that. Put it to the side. Let's start building a raft. All right, so we've built this little engine, brick-built engine piece on the back here. And we're gonna put a, uh, oops. So the little clips, they actually are a little weak sometimes. So we have a little handle on there and we'll put that down. Now something interesting about this raft with the motor, you can see there's some those orange clips there. Those orange clips are to clip on these flames because this engine has caught on fire. So that's it for that little build. Now we're going to begin the actual 4x4 vehicle. So we'll start with this plate. Add some more plates. More plates. And then we have the modified plate with the Technic pins on it. That's more or less for the, the wheels and tires. So we have a brick here. A couple inverted slopes. Plate, and then we have these two long reddish brown plates that go right down the middle. Modified plate with a little toe ball receptacle piece. Good assortment of colors going in here. It's kind of the interior rainbow build. It's kind of typical with Lego builds that they fill the inside, the guts of the model, for lack of a better word, um, with random color. Well, they may not be random, but they don't seem to match the color scheme of the finished model. Um, mostly because those filler bricks are just for structural support. And they, they just make them different colors. On large models, I've noticed that they're, they're actually very useful because you can orient the model based on where you see certain colors. So they're kind of visual clues for when you're building the, the model that you can tell which way is front and back or side by side, stuff like that. But for the most part, you know, like when we built the brick heads the other day, um, the interior of those have, you know, like yellow pieces and other assorted colors that really don't match the finished model. And those are really, really small models. So the filler stuff is all strictly just for filling. So that green piece, that green plate that we used, can you see it now? So that's kind of what I'm saying. We've we've built so much on top of that one green plate that it um, doesn't even matter what color it is. So here we're going to put two more on here. So if you're watching, pay attention and notice that it will. These two green plates will disappear. I guarantee it. You won't see them. Be like they never existed. 
All right, so we have some two by six plates. One by four plate. Inverted slopes. With some one by ones. You may notice I'm building this holding it in my hand. It's kind of, kind of the way I like to build my models. Um, especially when they're kind of small, you know, I feel that, you know, when I, you see how I'm squeezing, I'm actually holding everything and squeezing it together. I feel that it, it makes for a, a stronger build when I can physically feel like I'm squeezing everything together. But they do make it, see, it's, it's flat on the bottom. They do make it where you can actually just set it on the table like this and push the, the bricks on. And honestly, it, 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 the end result is the same. It's more of a, a comfort level for me. I feel comfortable holding the model and actually squeezing it together. I'd be curious to hear what, how you guys build. Do you put it on the table like this? So I have it on the table and I'm just pushing down and relying on the table to be the, the other squeezing hand part. Or are you like me and do you like to hold the model with two hands? build like that let me know put a comment down below maybe it's the way when I was younger as a kid we used to build me and my brother would build mocks all the time because we we didn't get Lego sets that often but when we did we just took them apart and built whatever we wanted with them and when we built we built in the middle of our bedroom floor so there really was no table to put anything on so uh, we held everything in our hand when we were building and we just kind of sifted through pieces and built as we, as we went. All right, so that completes bag number one. So let's quickly move on to bag number two. All right, all of our bag two parts are out, ready to go. And um, no minifigures in this bag. We're just continuing on the build. So we're gonna put some plates on here. Modified plate that only has two studs on it. You can see it's a tile in the middle with the two studs on the end. It's a, a plate that Lego loves to use a lot. And remember I was talking about these green plates? Look, look, look what's going to happen here. Put those two pieces on and they're gone. So you could never, I mean, you can kind of barely look, no, you, well, sort of. Maybe there's a little spot in there you can see green, right? For the most part, you can't even tell what that brick or plate was. So... Oh, I was talking about these modified plates, the one by fours with the two studs on them. Um, it used to be a kind of a um, uncommon part. It wasn't rare. You didn't get it that often. Um, I don't know, seven, eight years ago when that piece was starting to gain popularity. It seems nowadays like every set has that particular piece in it. So it doesn't bother me. It's just, it uh, um, it piques my interest when I see a rise of a certain part that's actually been around for a while and you actually just start to see it being used more and more and more. It's like someone at the Lego company or Lego group basically said, hey designers, you guys need to start using this piece in every one of your sets. And they said, okay, boss, whatever you want. And they started putting it in every set. I'm sure that's not how it went down. Well, not 100% sure. But it just seems that way when I build these models. And it's not bad because what you can do is you can put a piece here and a piece here and cover those studs up and it looks like a big tile so it's actually a very useful piece in my opinion if you know how to use it right so the model has a, a blue stripe that's going to go all the way around so that's what those blue pieces there are for so we're going to cover it up with with a, a stripe of white so you can see it goes orange blue white blue and the top will be white again. 
And what do we have here? We're going to work on the front bumper and grill area. Put this on here. The instructions are really easy to follow along. If you're curious, if you want to buy this for a younger kid, Lego City stuff is aimed more towards the younger Lego fan. So it is very simplified. We have our first sticker. It's a license plate sticker. Put that guy right there. MM60165. So the 60165 is the set number. The MM typically represents the Lego set designer's initials. So whoever designed this at Lego kind of gets to put their little fingerprint on it in a metaphorical way with their initials. And sometimes there's it's not their initials, but maybe their son's or daughter's initials or maybe their wife's. Or a family member of some sort. So it's somehow related to the um, the set designer. The uh, designer video for the um, old fishing store. That Lego idea set that we built a couple weeks ago. Um, he mentioned that the... The name of the store on the actual Lego set was named after his son. So that kind of verifies the the fact that they they meaning the Lego group actually allows set designers to either use initials or real names of real people. So that's pretty cool. I think it was called Anton's Fish Shop store. I think that's what it was called. So apparently that was his son and when I say the set designer, so that was a Lego idea set. So there was a, a fan that designed the set, but any fan design set that gets approved through Lego ideas still has to go through an actual Lego designer. So the Lego designer um, will take his idea and modify it in any ways needed to make it an actual uh, Lego set that meets Lego's quality standards as far as build and structural stability. So he's credited with a, a designer status on that set, even though it was submitted by a fan. So that's why he got to put his son's name as the uh, the name of the the fishing store. Either way, it's a, it's a win-win for for both fans and the Lego group because it's a very popular set, especially with um, fans of modular buildings, and it's uh, beneficial to the actual fan that submitted the model because they get part of the terms with Lego group. If your set gets selected as one of the sets to be produced, you will actually earn a percentage of the sales of that particular set. So if it's a very, very popular set and they sell, you know, who knows, say a hundred thousand copies of the set, then that Lego fan that submitted that model will get a, a percentage of those sales. And, and rightfully so. I mean, it's their, if it wasn't for the fan idea, then the, uh, the set would never be produced and Lego wouldn't make any money off of it. So, like I said, win-win. All right, so you can see we're getting pretty close. We've got... The bulk of the model laid out. Um, the next step is our four wheels and tires. So this is an interesting 4x4 response unit 
because there's no back door on the actual truck. Now the truck looks cool. It definitely has a like a uh, Ford Explorer style look to it, or maybe say a uh, a Land Rover type look. But if you see right here, there's a hole in the back. So I'm sure we're going to put something in there. I hope we're going to put something in there. It just feels kind of weird that it's empty. But anyway, that completes instruction book number one. It also completes bag number two. So we're going to move on to our second instruction book and our third bag of parts right now. Okay, we have all of our bag three parts out. We are good to go. We have a minifigure. So this is one of the... I guess response unit workers. So she has a a printed, looks like a printed life vest on the torso. And you can see back here the little red part and then the two red pieces in the front. But I find that interesting because the next step shows us putting on a yellow life vest over that. And then her head and hair piece. She has some binoculars to help see things far away. So as they're responding to an emergency, she's kind of the, the person looking to see. She could see some someone in danger that needs help. Maybe a small olive green raft that's on fire. Go figure. Okay, so let's zoom out a bit. We have a buoy, a little floating warning device that's in the water. They use these to notify boaters that there's either um, a shoreline or some sort of dock or something coming up that they need to slow down and be cautious in their boat. And where I'm from, we call it a buoy. I've heard that in in Europe, where there's more of an English accent, that sometimes they call this a buoy. I think I've heard that in from people from Canada as well. So they call it a buoy, not a buoy. I looked it up, and both pronunciations are actually correct. So. It's either a boy or a buoy. I call it a buoy. You can call it a boy if you want. There you go. So that um, anti-tile, that blue anti-tile, it's kind of rounded, kind of like a the bottom side of a, a dome. So what that allows us to do is actually kind of be off balance and it kind of looks like it's actually floating in water. You can see you can kind of tap it and it'll kind of spin a little bit. So imagine like waves kind of going by and it's just kind of floating there, doing a little spinning action. It's actually a, a nice little touch and it really didn't take but one piece to add that little detail. So very, very cool. Okay, so we're gonna take our large orange raft that came loose in the box. We have a few uh, stickers to put on it. We have this 04 sticker, kind of like an identification number. So maybe this is raft number four from the Coast Guard. So we'll put that Coast Guard sticker on here. Kind of try to keep it straight. There we go. And then we're going to repeat those stickers on the other side. Raft four and... Coast Guard. So when I, when I put these long stickers on, I just kind of barely touch it to it until I have it oriented kind of where I want it. And then you can push it down and it, it helps put the stickers on a little straight because if you just barely touch it to it, you actually have a little bit of flexibility to keep moving that sticker. 
so just nice little tip for you hopefully that'll help you put on some stickers in the future it's one of the things that i definitely struggled with for a long time um but over time i got a little bit better at it still not great at it but i definitely feel a lot more comfortable i used to almost be scared to put stickers on because i was worried that they would go on crooked and i would have to try to rip them off and it would tear them and it would just end up being a big mess so i'm definitely a lot more comfortable like i said okay we have orange plate actually quite a bit of this construction orange color in this set a couple tiles one there one there and some plates with clips on the top We actually have some printed double wide cheese slopes. It has the little Coast Guard seal or Coast Guard shield emblem on there. And we have this roll cage piece. That's pretty cool. I like the way that it's, so it's typically used in a construction vehicle, um, <clears throat> but they've adapted it because it is symmetrical. It's the same either way. Um, so they've adapted it to actually be a roll cage part on this, um, I guess, boat. All right. So here's our steering wheel. A couple white bricks go up right there. And we have some slopes. Real tiles and two jumper tiles. Have some lights there. Come on, go on there. And two of these two by two round tiles with a stud right in the middle. It's kind of like a jumper tile. But a round version of it you know those two by two square jumper tiles but imagine it being round all right so we have these trans light blue panels to represent the windscreen so on these round tiles with the stud that i was talking about we're going to put some flotation devices we have a loud hailer, we'll clip on there, and a walkie-talkie right there. Turn this guy around. We have two of these antenna pieces. And this. So that's one of the bad things about holding it in your hand. If it slips, you're in trouble because it's going to fall out of your hand. Looks good. Move that to the side because we have two engine pieces to make. So not only is this a rescue boat, but it's a fast motorboat style rescue vehicle. This brick flew away whenever I dropped the model. And I was putting them on too early anyway. Let's switch that around. Okay. Let's go there. Pop that on. Pop that on. 
basically the boat. Um, we have a communication device that we're going to put on the top of the roll cage area. So that trans orange stud and a droid head. I see undecorated droid head. So this whole piece will go right there. Now we have this light bluish gray crate. We're gonna fill it with some supplies. First thing being a fire extinguisher. Then we have these two trans light blue one by one round pieces. And these represent water bottles. I would guess that they're water bottles. That's what they're gonna be in my imaginary world. And then we have an additional personal flotation device. And that will go right there in the front of the raft. Okay, so that completes instruction book two. It also completes bag number three of parts. So let's move on to our third and final instruction book right here, as well as our fourth bag of parts right now. Okay, we have everything for our final bag out. Um, there's no more minifigures in this set. It looks like we only had three minifigures. So we're just gonna jump right into the build of the trailer piece. Pretty much all that's left for the set. And as we've uh, begun to, got used, to get used to is there's a lot of plates and we usually start with plates. Here's our little toe ball piece that will connect to the four by four. Another long plate will go all the way down the middle here. I have a couple brackets, have a grill tile. And we have more of these modified one by four plates with only two studs. Going down to there. Now we have two more tiles. Turn this guy over, we have two anti-tiles. Back around, a little guardrail type piece. And we have four more of these modified plates with the two studs. Last one right there. Here, another slotted tile. Where is it at? Uh, hiding right in front of my face. That's the worst hidden brick. The one that's hiding right in front of your face. Like you're looking through all the piles and you don't need to look through the piles. It's right there. There's an old saying, one of my history teachers used to say it to me when, not just to me, but to anyone in the class, whenever we were trying to find an answer, like in our textbook or something, he would say, if it was a snake, it would have bit you by now. And what that basically means is what you're looking for is right in front of your face. And because you cannot see it, it would have bit you by now. That's what that saying means. He was a old Texas native. Kind 
kind of wonder what happened to him. All right, so we have more brackets. There's actually quite a few brackets in this bag. We didn't use a lot of them throughout the set, but definitely catching up with them. We used quite a few in the the build of the 4x4. Alright, so next we have these double wide cheese slopes with a modified plate that has a bar on it. We need to make four of those. Uh, little modules. So, that's all four of them. What we're going to do is put each one of these on the, the two brackets that are exposed. Just like that. So we're going to turn this over again. Add a couple additional plates to the bottom. here and then we have these modified plates that have the little micro pin on it it's a little pin there it's smaller than a technic pin but what those are for is the uh, the wheels and tires the wheels have a little micro hole in them And we have these guys on here. Two of these little clips with a bar hole in it. And we're going to put these little round knobs in there. Put those there. And these are the little things that hold the trailer up when it's parked. And when it's being towed, they fold up like that. Pretty smart little build there. So we have two tiles that go on the side of these brackets and we're going to put stickers on them. These stickers represent a little storage cabinet. It's basically what that little sticker piece looks like. And with this one, guess what time it is? Last sticker time. seat that goes on here and that seat is not for sitting I don't think I think it's more or less to help hold the, the raft in place when it's on the trailer so here's our wheels and tires and you can see it has a little micro pin hole there that we line up with those little micro pins and pop those in place and this is what I was talking about with the since we have the wheels and tires on now we can fold those down and the trailer will sit on the table flat versus if they're put up it just falls down so let's go ahead and uh, pop this on the, the back of the 4x4 unit that'll go there and this big raft piece goes right there and it's pretty neat the uh, those little black bar pieces you can see they grip right onto that little indented piece and then same with this little railing back here it holds onto the back just fine and then the chair grips onto the front so that thing is not moving at all very good so that's a fun little set um probably has a ton of playability i think that this is a raft that will actually float because there is no holes on the bottom of it so I imagine you could actually put this in your swimming pool or bathtub or any other type of water without, without it sinking too much. So we'll put that guy back on there. So here's our, our buoy, or buoy, whatever you want to call it. We have a little mini motorboat on fire. 
And you have your dark red octopus. We have this guy swimming around, taking pictures of the octopus. She is uh, looking for danger. And he is your 4x4 driver guy. Very good. So that is a fun set. Um, Lego City stuff is always fun. They, they typically add a lot of playability to these sets, and this is definitely one that will not disappoint any young fan, teenage fan, maybe even an adult fan of LEGO. So let me know your thoughts. Put a comment down below. I know a lot of people love watching the LEGO City video, videos that I make, so um, check out the links that I have down below. I have done so many LEGO City videos. It's going to be the first one that you see uh, with all my other videos, so if you like just build videos in general. I do tons of Lego build videos on this channel. So watch all the Lego City build videos. You could probably binge on that for weeks. And then once you're caught up with all the Lego City videos, check out everything else I have. So thanks again for watching. You guys are my biggest fans. I appreciate everyone that watches these videos. And we will see you in the next one.